carrying on with the theme of self-awareness, I'd like to introduce you to seven archetypes of personality. Now, how do these archetypes develop? As I mentioned earlier in one of my other videos, that between the ages of zero and seven is when we're really developing our personality. And what we want is our needs to be met. We want to be seen and heard and validated, loved. If our needs aren't met in the way that we need them to be met, we adapt our personality to get our needs met by going out into the world and presenting ourselves in different ways, which is an archetype. And this will all make much more sense when I begin to describe them to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly go through the seven and at the end of this we will provide a PDF for you to see what they look like and maybe do some journaling around noticing which one you are. Now when I say which one you are, it's not fixed, okay? You could be three different archetypes. You could be one particular archetype with your family, a different one with your partner, a different one in business. So they're not fixed, but I just want you to become more aware of them because the more awareness we have, the more ability we have to change them. Why do we want to change them? Because the thing is what these coping strategies, survival strategies that we set down in our childhood rarely serve us in our adulthood and can actually begin to get in our way in our relationships and our careers. So the first one is life of the party and this is pretty self-explanatory. This person is cheerful, happy, telling jokes, making everybody laugh, maybe they're the sort of clown. But what they're doing is they, they, they're preventing anybody getting inside and seeing the real them. So when you ask them how they're, I'm fine, yeah, everything's fine, everything's great, and they're always like this. But no one is ever able to completely be happy all the time, so they are definitely hiding their emotions because they've probably been shamed in childhood about showing their emotions, and they've learned to hide them and mask them. The next one is caretaker. Now this one is, there's a lot of caretakers around. Some of them are voluntary and some of them are involuntary. And what these people do is they look after others before they look after self. And people pleasing, fawning can very much come into this category. They will look after people's needs and they will be at the bottom of their list or not even on their list because they get their self-worth by making other people feel good. And that is what makes them tick. Uh, the next one is overachiever. Overachiever has become addicted to achieving. And what is at the back end of that is probably family values that want them to do really well. And I, I saw this in some of my clients where perhaps they were wanting to be, let's say an athlete and their parents wanted them to be a lawyer. So they went and studied law and they really didn't like it, but it got them accolades and validation from their family, which is what they really needed. And it was the only time perhaps that they, they got that, they got noticed by their family because of their good grades, doing well, becoming a lawyer, a solicitor, a barrister, whatever. But they were probably not very happy inside, but they got addicted to the achieving. Then there's the rescuer. And I always think of this as the person that looks for the bird with the broken wing. They will really look for somebody that is, that is in a worse position than themselves, that needs a lot of help. They will do everything to help them at the expense of themselves. And that really can take a toll on them because they can develop health issues because they're fatigued, they're overstretched. You've heard of adrenal fatigue and adrenal failure. So that's what can happen when this person is looking after others. Then there's the yes person. The yes person says yes to everything and no to, to nothing. They say, yes, I can do that, yes. And they're exhausted and they don't have time and they're very busy with their work or their family, or with, but they will just make time for everybody and they will drop everything. And there's, there can be levels of martyrdom in this. Um, sometimes we see it in our family. I, I know my mother was very much like this. She, she didn't know how to say no to anybody and she didn't have any boundaries or very few boundaries. And that really took a toll on her health. So I'm gonna talk about boundaries in another one. We will definitely get to that. The next one is 
underachieving. This is a very interesting one. These people play small. They're invisible. They don't want to be seen. They want to just be under the radar. And that's how they get their love. They think that if they don't make waves and they don't cause any problems, that that's how they will be loved. And finally, there's the hero worshiper. And this is very interesting. This one can frequently um, sort of become addicted to a cult, be hypnotized, let's say, by a cult or a religion. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with religion or cults. I'm just talking about the type of person that can be pulled into this. They're looking to follow. They put, they put people on pedestals, like superheroes. Um, you might know somebody like this. I certainly do. They got very much involved in a cult and then they couldn't get out because they became quite addicted to the hero worshipping. So the point of all of these is just to acquaint yourself with them and to notice how they have their good parts, but they also can be very detrimental to our physical health and also our mental health. And as I said, we're going to supply a PDF with this video and we're going to just um, do a brief synopsis of each one of these and provide some lines for you and I would like you to make some notes if you see any similarities between these seven archetypes and yourself. And some of them you might notice that you used to be and you're not anymore and some of them you may notice that you're very much in that category and then we can begin to do some healing around the archetypes that are getting in your way and stopping you from living the life that you want and being the best version of yourself. Thank you very much. See you on the next video.